What up, B-Squad? It is your boy, JB, and we are here today, you guys, with a brand new review for Reasonable Doubt, Season 2, Episode Number 2, you guys. This episode was titled, Say Hello. Now, before we go ahead and get into this episode review, if you guys are watching or listening to this video and you guys aren't subscribed to the channel yet, then I need you guys to do me a solid favor and like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn on your post notifications, and share the video. And with that out of the way, you guys, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this episode of Reasonable Doubt, shall we? All right, guys, so this episode, we open up. So we see Jax and Lewis. They're in bed together, right? And she's talking to Lewis about moving back into the house. And Lewis is like, you know, mm, I'm thinking about it. So he also told her, yeah, the kids know that um, I'm staying here. She's like, how do they know that? She was like, you know, he was like, you know, Naima said what she said. Spencer said that boomers, they, this is what they do. She was like, boomers? She's like, fuck them kids. He's like, yeah, fuck them. I thought that was funny, right? So then we see Jax at the office with Daniel and Crystal. So they are waiting on Corey to come in. And Crystal's whole thing is before he even walked into the building, she was like, mm, I ain't going to be friendly with him. I don't know him. I don't, all this kind of stuff, right? And Daniel is doing a little bit of digging into him. And Daniel has um, pretty much figured, you know, looked at his looked at his record, know his dad was a, a lawyer, know that his grandfather was a lawyer and all this kind of stuff, right? And then Corey walked in. And baby, when Corey walked in, <laughs> Crystal's face. She, she, because at first she had said to, um, she said to Jax, if you like it, I love it. Then she was like, I love it, love it. I was like, <laughs> girl, you laid eyes on that man and you was, he was ready, ready. So after that, um, we see Jax and Corey. So they're talking to the partners about him taking over Chanel's case. So some of the partners were asking him, like, is your daddy such and such? And do you know, do you know such and such? And he was like, yeah, that's my dad. So we find out that some of the guys knew his father. They've done, they've worked with his father, played games with his father and all that kind of stuff, right? So they were um, eager to welcome him aboard. So then after that, we see as, you know, Jackson Corey went to go meet up with Chanel at the jail, right? So... When she came in, she did hug Jax, but then she asked her, like, girl, where you been? Because I ain't saw your ass in a few weeks. I was like, mm, okay, girlfriend, you and you need my help, not the other way around. But I get it. We've been friends for years, and you ain't been down here to see me, so I absolutely got it. So I ain't really too upset with it, right? And then she also asked her, who is this right here? So Jax told her that with this case, she's going to need him to, to help. And she's like, I thought you were my lawyer. And so Jax told her that, which I thought about this in the last episode, and I actually said it in a review. Wouldn't it be a conflict of interest for Jax to represent Chanel since they are best friends? Like, I think that I think that the DA could, you know, you know, say bias and something like that. So that's what um, Jax told her that she's too close to the case and that but she still will be on the team. Right. So we get, you know, um, Corey going down his resume. He went to Howard and all this kind of stuff. And Chanel wasn't that impressed with it. But then, you know, because she was being rude to him. So he just asked Jax to leave for a minute, right? So Jax left. And then when he when Jax left, that's when he really started, you know, he had a conversation with Chanel and it won him home one hour over, right? So he's she's on board with it, right? Next up, we move over to Jackson Lewis, who are at couples counseling, right? And, you know, they're saying how things are going good. You know, she's happy. But at this point, they still have not been intimate with one another, right? So the doctor asked them, like, when is the last time you guys went on a date with each other? And they both looking like, mm, he's like, that long, huh? So what he suggested for them to do was to go on a date and see where it leads. So after that, we see Jax. She's at home, and Jax is rolling the blunt up, and she got a text from Crystal that had a video link attached to it, right? So in the she clicked on the link, and when she clicked on the link, 
it was an interview that Corey was doing. So in the interview, Corey was just basically saying that, you know, his client, she doesn't have any money, that all the money that was that she's allegedly has was tied to her husband. Right. So he wants her to sit in jail because she's not going to be able to post bail. And so the next morning we see Jax at the office and she's like, so you don't think that Chanel should post bail? And he's like, no, it's not good for the optics. And she said, well, what about Chanel? Fuck the optics. What about Chanel? And he says, I know that this is hard for you to take a step back because you both are friends. But ultimately, this is the good thing for Chanel. So, you know, she was like, well, you know, we have a meeting with the partner. So let's go and talk to them. He's like, oh, yeah, my, my man, Dan, he has a presentation. And she's like, who the hell is Dan? Turns out Dan is Daniel. So we see as, you know, um, they are presenting to the partners and great presentation, by the way. Now, we move back over to Jax. So Jax went to go talk to Chanel, right? And Jax is telling Chanel that she doesn't think that her being in jail is beneficial for her, right? But Chanel told her that I talked to um, Corey. Corey thinks this is the right thing to do. But she said, well, what do you think? And I was like, good question. What do you think? But then she told her, girl, JT froze all the assets. So she don't. Ha I don't have that money. So Jack said, well, what if Autumn, Sally, and I can come up with the money? And she was like, okay, cool. If y'all can do that, then we, we got it. So after that, we see the girls. They're over at Chanel's house. So one of um, JT's friends who is played by Von Heber, and I couldn't think of what the, I can remember what the character's name was, but he was telling them that he was able to sell some shoes that people are looking into some of the shoes that, you know, JT got and they got about 10, they can get about 10,000 for each. Right. So they're like, okay, cool. But unfortunately they're still about a hundred thousand dollars short. So Autumn was like, well, I can ask my wife for some money. And they're like, no, you don't have to do that. And so Sally said, well, you know, maybe I can get the rest of the money. Now, we see Jax. So Jax is sitting at a bar and she's reading this article where there are some people who want to have a moment of silence for JT to honor him. And it's like, wow, did y'all, I mean, I'm pretty sure somebody could have put those pictures out of a battered and bruised Chanel. But then it just goes to show that no matter, you know, people will find any way, especially if you like a person, people will find any way when it comes to domestic abuse, they will find any way to make the man the victim and the woman the villain, because that is exactly what's happening here with Chanel. Now, I'm going to be honest, when it comes down to Chanel, do I think that Chanel is hiding some stuff? 100%. And we'll get into it as we get into the later into the episode, right? So we see as Lewis showed up, he was like, and Jack's like, it don't even matter. It's not even that important. It's fine. We're good. So we see them at their sitting at the table. They smiling, having drinks, eating. The little waiter came over, asked him if they wanted dessert. Child, the look on their face was, we both going to be each other's dessert. But they did order dessert and more wine. So they got home <laughs> and, you know, they were getting undressed. You know, Lewis took his shirt off. Jack took her dress off and her heels, and they were about to get, get it popping until they got in the bed and went straight to sleep. I was like, I knew that was going to happen. I'm like, y'all were too drunk, and y'all took y'all asses right on to bed, right? So then after that, we see Sally. So Sally is at home talking to her husband, and she's asking him to put their house up so that Chanel can get post bail. And I was, I was, here's the thing. I got what the husband was saying and I get Sally because it's, 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 it's kind of like a double edge. It's like a double edge sword, right? It's a cash. It's a double edge sword, really and truly, because one part of you is like, okay, I want to protect my cousin. This is my family. I want to get her out of jail. So the way she can be with her daughters. But at the same time, if we put the house up as collateral for her, you know, we could be upside down if she skips on bail. Like there are so many factors 
that could play into this. And I got where he was coming from. But ultimately, he said that he just can't do it. And I'm honestly not mad that he said he couldn't do it. Like, I, because I, I don't know how I would feel if I were in that situation. I, I can't even say what I would do, but I actually understood her husband. It's like, uh, and it's pretty much like he's damned if you damned if you do, damned if you don't, right? But you know, we'll see what happens as we get into it, right? Now, after that, you guys, we see Corey. So Corey, um, he went over to Jax's place because he, you know, he found out that they are trying to get bail for Chanel, and he's pissed off, right? He said that Chanel needs to stay in jail to look like the victim for the world to see. Now, I, I, again, I get where he's going with this, but damn, I don't know if I would. Uh, I don't know how I feel about this. I want you guys to tell me what your thoughts are about this, because I, I get, I li literally, I can, I can see where he's coming from, but do I think it's a little bit excessive? A little bit, right? I really truly do think it's a little bit of a little bit excessive. But again, you guys tell me what you think and feel. And Jack said that she needs to be at home with her girls. And he got pissed off because he was like, Why did you bring me here, Jax? It's like you're trying to sabotage me. And so Lewis came down and is like, yo, bro, when you when you talk to my wife again, like that, you and I gonna have a problem. So I'm going to need you to lower the bass in your voice. And I was like, absolutely. Lower that bass, Mr. Corey. Lower your bass. So after that, we see Chanel. So Chanel is home with her girls who are happy to see her, right? And I wonder how did they get all the money? Because they said earlier that they were $100,000 short. Child, I'm hoping Sally and her husband, I hope, I'm hoping Sally didn't talk her husband into putting that house up. Oh, because we're going to talk about it as we get to the episode, end of the episode. But after that, you know, they uh, told the girls to give them a few minutes and they did a cleanse of the house of any spirits unwanted in that house, i.e. JT spirit, right? Now, we see, uh, we see after that, Daniel. So Daniel is doing some work. So he's with this, um, he is with a girl named Carlotta, right? And... He, he found out some information about JT's assets. So he found out that $30 million was moved from his foundation to a shell account, right? And so Corey wants to know, wants him to find out exactly where this money went to. He also wants for Daniel to set up a meeting with him and his hard ass tomorrow so that he can kind of get a feel of where she is, right? So Daniel asks him how you get over somebody. And he's talking about the girl that he mentioned in episode one. And Crystal was like, y'all only went on two dates before she ghosted you. And she also told him, leave that other one alone. And, you know, Corey gave him some advice and also thanked him. He was like, it feels good to be appreciated. And Jack was like, I appreciate you. And Crystal started laughing. She said, oh, I thought that was a joke. So after that, Jax and Corey had a conversation with each other. And, you know, he was basically telling her, like, so you got Chanel out of, out of jail. Cool. If, you know, if that's, if that's what you think is right, then go for it, right? So after that, um, after that, we move over to Jax and Lewis, right? They're in therapy. They're going over the date night. So the Lord, the, not, the, not the Lord, the doctor is asking them, how they think it went. Jax thinks that the date night went well. He noticed that Lewis had a little bit of a look on his face. He said, well, what about you? He was like, eh. He was like, it was okay, but we didn't, you know, get intimate. And then Jax like, so that's my fault? Like, we both went to sleep. I was like, Jax, this is what the, he's been telling you guys. It's like you guys keep score. Because Lewis wasn't saying it was your fault. He was just saying, hey, you know, yeah, we had a good time, but we didn't we didn't complete the exercise. The key to the exercise was to see where it goes after the date night. It went back to the bedroom, but y'all got your clothes off, but y'all ended up falling asleep. And that was because y'all were drunk. 
but they started arguing with each other, right? And this week he says for their assignment to take get your phone, put a five minute timer on it, hold hands, and look into each other's eyes. I was like, I don't think that's gonna go the way that you want to go, sir. But they agreed to do it. But again, like I said, I, don't, I was like, I don't think that's gonna go the way you think it's gonna go, sir. I don't think that's gonna play out how you want it to play out. So after that, we see they got home. They did the exercise. At first, it was very awkward. They were both smiling. I was like, somebody's about to laugh. And I thought it was going to be Lewis. But actually, it was Jax who laughed first. And then Lewis got pissed off and walked out. He was like, you know, I have my own. I have needs too, um, Jax. And she's like, okay, I get it. You just want to get your dick wet. It's been a while. He said, it ain't been as long as you think it's been. And she was like, what the hell does that mean? He said, you're a smart girl. Think about it. You'll figure it out. I was like, I know you in line. So that night, Jack slept in the bed. She had a nightmare and she had she took a medication. Meanwhile, Lewis is sleeping out there on the couch. So the next morning he came into the room and they got into it again. And like he, you know, he said, here we go. We're keeping score. And she's like, if you want me to take off my boxing gloves then you need to take off yours, because she asked him, was he going to JT's funeral? And he said, of course, I'm going to his funeral. I was like, well, she just asked your question, sir. You didn't have to get that heated. So we move over to JT's funeral. So there are a bunch of protesters out there protesting against Chanel. And it 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 blows my mind. Like I said earlier, when you literally think about it, people, <laughs> it's, it's, it's interesting the, the mental gymnastics that people do to excuse abuse especially if it's somebody that you like and somebody who also excuse it in this episode his mother so his mama came up to chanel and jess was like uh-uh you probably you, you said that you would stay away so like, no i just want to have a, i just want to have a little conversation with her and so Jax walked away and then you know her and the mama had a conversation and the mama lost me because baby i would have popped that hoe I would have popped that lady because she gonna sit there and ask Chanel, why didn't you leave? And Chanel was like, bitch, you knew what your son was doing to me and you didn't even try to stop it. And she said, if, if she said, I was fighting for my life, it could have been me in that casket. And his mom said, I wish it was you girl. I, <laughs> I get that. That is your child. But your child was abusing his wife. Now, if your child had taken Chanel out, you would still be without your son because your son would be in, in jail for taking out his wife. Like, baby, I would have slapped that old bitch. I would have slapped her something seriously because girl ain't no motherfucking way. Mm -mm. Would have slapped that hoe. Would have slapped the hell out of her. And then she also talking about she didn't want her to be there. She's there for her daughters. Lady, I was I would have punched that hoe. So then we see Corey. So Corey went to go see Miss Hardass, right? And he's asking her, you know, why is she overreaching with this case? Now, what I will say is, do I think Miss Hardass is overreaching with this case? Yes. But the more that we find out, it's like, is she really overreaching? Because the things that we find out is not looking good. It, it looks like a steaming hot pile of horse crap right we'll talk about it but i do know that corey had miss hard ass because he asked her you know like why are you going why why have you gone from um multiple da offices i was like oh that is a good question so corey like he's gonna be as good as um Jax is and i'm here for it give it to miss hard ass let's pause um i'm gonna pause for you guys and then i'll be right back all right you guys so next up we see chanel so chanel is at home and Chanel is reading all the negative comments about her and just remembering how the people looked at her at the funeral. And Jax told her, girl, stop reading these damn comments first and foremost. So she told Jax that when she closes her eyes, that she's afraid that JT will wake her up with, you know, ice cold water to the face. And she thought that by seeing that his body in that casket would help her, but it's not right. So she just says, you know, that she feels like she deserves to be in jail. And Jax was like, wait a minute, Nationale. 
girl, <laughs> is there anything that you're keeping away from me that you need to tell me? And she was like, I thought you weren't my, but you're not my lawyer, Jax. So Jax left. And after Jax left, Chanel called somebody up and I was like, girl, don't you do what I think that you're about to do. So we see Daniel and Crystal. So they are in the office with Corey going over everything, right? So Daniel found out that it was actually Chanel who moved the money, the $30 million, right? And it was over the course of three months with the last transaction dating six days before, um, you know, old boy's death. And I was like, damn it. So Corey wants them to look into their every move when these transactions happen, right? Crystal also said that she's printed out, you know, JT's car navigation. And Corey asked her to call Chanel in. So Chanel went over to Sally's crib. She had a little backpack for the little girl. And, you know, she just told Sally that she needs some time to think. And she thanks, uh, um, she thanked her for everything that she's done for her. I was like, yep, she about to run. She's a runner. She's a track star. Baby girl is about to run. So we see Jackson Lewis. So they are at home. You know, they smoking a blunt together. Jax thanked him, you know, for, you know, for being there for her. She admits that. The emotional shit is really hard for her, and she hasn't been taking the assignment seriously. We know that, Jax. So she said that, you know, um, she asked him, like, all this stuff that you're doing, look at her. I'm sorry, you guys. So I'm actually watching, um, there's a MTV Classics, and the girl who plays Chanel, Shannon Kane, is, she is in Let's Get Married. Um, not, she's, not, she's in Jagged Edges. No, that's not her. Yes, that is her. I think this is her in Jagged Edge's um, Let's Get Married video. I'm, I'm, no, that's not her. They look That looks like her. Maybe not. I could be wrong. Neither here nor there. Back to the show. But um, Jax is asking, is Lewis punishing her? He says that's not what this is about. So... <laughs> this scene was so interesting to me because, like I said, they smoking the blunt. She went down on him. Then she came back up and got on top of him. And she asked him, how did he fuck the other woman? Because she also asked him, who was it? And he told her, it's not that important. I was like, Bush, well, you know what? It may not be important because Jax, you done been, I mean, girl, you've been getting your back. You got your back blown out quite a few times last season. And he even watched you get your back blown out in one episode. So, yeah, Jax, let's not do that. But when she said, asked him how did he, you know, fuck the girl, he showed her. I was like, oh, okay. So the next morning they woke up. She tells him how she feels safe with him there and that she doesn't want any space and that she wants him back in the house. He said, okay, uh, cool. He'll move back in. So then the phone rang and it's Corey. So, we didn't hear what Corey had to say, and then um, Sally called, and we didn't hear what Sally had to say. But we found out that Sally went through the backpack, opened it up, and there was a note in there from Chanel, basically saying that she don't ran the hell away. I was like, I know you fucking lying. And Corey is like, Jax, we are fucked. Like, <laughs> what have you gotten me into? Chanel is gone. She's $30 million richer. Like, what the fuck? And that is the end of episode two. Great episode, you guys. Let me know what you guys thought about it. And in the comments below, subscribe to the channel, turn on your post notifications, share the video, you guys. And until the next time, stay safe. Take care of yourselves, you guys. Wash your hands. Be blessed. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.